Hello everybody and welcome to RPG Horror Stories. I'm your host to you and thank you that Green Hopkin for subscribing and joining the Discord server. It really does help me and I really appreciate that you've decided to become a bucket kin. Much love and stay sexy. Since derail the campaign. Not safe for work. Warning. Sexual content. ERP and torture. Hello everyone, thank you for taking the time to view this post. I'm fairly new to the subreddit, but I'm fairly engrossed in the stories others have shared and wanted to share my own D&D horror story that happened several years ago. I have spoken with the Dungeon Master for clarification on certain events that I felt may have been misinterpreted. The cast is as follows, placeholder names are used. Dungeon Master, she was in a relationship with Leon at the time. Peter, Powden and Rogue, role-playing as PTSD twins. Code DM Simp number one. Leon, Bard, Simp number two. Amy, Sorceress, the target of affection from the Simps. Dave, Warlock, Amy's boyfriend at the time who stayed quiet throughout everything and did not voice any opinion over the matter. Myself. A female samurai and a bystander to the, this entire situation. Quick context. Character driven homebrew campaign. Part two of a previous campaign. That one has a horror story of its own with a player that was like, I have no reason to join party for activity. Mine said in uh, a modern fantasy setting. This is my first ever D&D campaign, so I'm not very experienced at this time. The Dungeon Master was very good friends with Peter before the first campaign. After the horror of part one of the homebrew campaign and subsequent ban of a player, everyone was ready to put everything behind us and continue forward for the anticipated part two of our campaign. We had sort of bonded over the chaos and became friends. Peter and Leon wanted to invite two people to the campaign and the Dungeon Master accepted their request. In comes Amy and Dave, who were great people when I first met them, and both are artists, very chill, and they were in a relationship. After going through with character creations with them, we were ready to begin session zero. It wasn't until about the fifth session in when I began to notice the red flags. By this time, all important NPCs had been introduced, and we were on our quest to search for the seven zones that contained an aspect of power. One thing our DM encouraged was roleplay outside of sessions to get to know each other's characters well, as well as give key plot elements that were relevant to certain PCs. This would prove to be the starting point of disaster. Unbeknownst to myself, Amy and Peter had begun to engage in this activity to the extreme. For example, I would go to bed that night, noticing they were still in a chat room on our Discord server designated for side roleplay. The next morning, they were still there. This occurred for the next couple of days until the DM decided to investigate more as a welfare check than anything since this isn't exactly healthy behavior. She stumbled in on the two ERPing and reprimanded them for the extremely inappropriate behavior. Both Peter and Amy snacked back at her because it was none of the DM's business. The dungeon master gave them their first strike and warned that any more would result in kicking them from the campaign. This would set the tone for the rest of the campaign's short, short lifespan. Outside of the server, away from the supervision of the DM, Amy and Peter made a private discord and continued their activities and advancing character development between their characters way outside of the progress of the main story. Eventually, Leon, the DM's boyfriend, included himself in on the shenanigans without the DM being aware of the boyfriend's hanging out with friends activities. Hold the front fucking door. Can't this be seen as a form of cheating? I, I mean, like, you're ERPing with other people instead of your significant other. Can't that be seen as cheating in some way, shape, or form? That 
I don't know what the fuck is going on here. It, oh my god, simping for, for uh, <laughs> this one player. Uh, well, no, they, they, they sound fucking thirsty as shit. This is like that fucking uh, El Dorado meme template. Uh, <laughs> hold on, I'm, I'm gonna have to make one and put it on screen. Uh, here. So that you can see what I mean. Uh, it, it's gonna be fucking hilarious. But it, they're ba it's Mmm. Uh, let, let, let's let's move on. Fast forward a bit. Peter, Amy, and Leon began ghosting the DM. This was because whenever the DM had a question about how to use a pop system on the Discord server we utilized for combat, Peter was ghosting her. Then he would become frustrated with DM when the session was halted because of a confusion with the bot system she asked him for help with days prior to the sessions. At this time, Leon also began favoring hanging out with Amy, Peter, and David outside of our D&D sessions. Peter would later begin asking DM to give Amy's PC equipment that was clearly overpowered for our level and progress in the story. When the DM refused, I began to notice a gradual disinterest in continuing the main story with the three players, Amy, Peter, and Leon. They began to favor their side roleplay sessions that DM and I were convinced was just threesome sessions. By this point in the main story, we had found two of the seven stones, and learned two more of them were fused into a very important NPC who was a member of our party. I learned that they had discovered this important NPC had the stones of life and death, which meant he was virtually immortal. What did the PCs proceed to do with this information? Kill him, over and over and over again whenever the NPC annoyed them. As if he was an emotional punching bag, the DM was trying to get them to continue the main story through the NPC. This was my first and last intervention to get them to knock it off, to no avail. They continued to torture the NPC this way, and any continued protests from myself earned me a threat of PvP from Amy and Peter. Not even the Dungeon Master could stop them. It was out of control at this point. This was also the final straw, and the DM stopped the campaign by giving us one of the possible endings to the main story. The big bad evil guy was actually the other of our two NPC party members the whole time, who possessed the Stone of the Fire aspect, and my player character's love interest. He declared that his patience had grown thin with the three offending player characters, and revealed his identity to the party. He ripped the two stones out of the important NPC and used the power of death to kill all three of the player characters, and vanished, leaving my player character and Dave's player character shaken, shocked at what had just happened. After that, the DM exploded at Leon first, then Peter and Amy, then apologized to Dave and myself and left the server. I left shortly thereafter. Too long didn't read. Peter, Amy, and Leon were responsible for derailing a great campaign due to out-of-session activities. Peter and Leon simped for Amy. When confronted, Amy justified their behavior as, We are adults and we can do as we please! while disregarding the rules. Amy was also a perpetuator of persuading Leon that DM was not right for him. Edit number one. Below is a copy and pasted reply to Bomb Kirby that has some added context if any are interested in reading. The Dungeon Master did more behind the scenes than what I originally posted that she has made known to me. I didn't feel it was necessary to include it at the point of the making the post, however, while I will admit that I felt there was a lot of leniency, I concluded it was because she and Peter were good friends at the time. There was also a lot of happenings that we were unaware of, like the private discord that they had created, and it didn't come to light until the end of our campaign. 
This was after the DM tightened her enforcement of the rules. When Peter let it slip that he and Amy's PCs were having developments unbeknownst to the Dungeon Master, she questioned them. Thus, the discovery of their side activities on a separate, private Discord came to light. A second strike with a final warning was issued, and the decanonization of weeks worth of player character development that happened outside of the supervision of the Dungeon Master followed. As you can imagine, they did not take this well with Amy going so far as to call the DM controlling and abusive to Leon. The downhill spiral plummeted even faster after their leading to the unfortunate climax of the campaign. Okay, let's break this down a little bit. So, for one, they bring in two new players, that's fine. They had session zero. Good, good! They were following the rules up until session five. Uh, the DM finds out that they are doing ERP, which the DM is not fine with. So the DM tells them, hey, no ERP, this is strike one. Don't do that shit. I'm not cool with it. What do they do? They make a separate Discord server for their own ERP that they make canon by force. And what do they do after that? They start to corrupt Leon, the DM's significant other, to turn Leon against the DM. They then start psychologically manipulating Leon into thinking that DM isn't good enough for him. Uh, start using Leon to try and get uh, extra bits and bobs in the campaign, little bits and stuff that's like stupid OP and everything. And then at the end of it, they start screaming at the DM about how this is the DM's fault. And the DM does the correct thing, cans the campaign, murders the problem players, goes off on all of them, and rightly goes off on Leon. Let me get, let me get this straight. I, Leon is not a victim here. Uh, Leon fucking cheated on his significant other by uh, entering into ERP, which I am convinced myself that it might well have just also been just straight up threesomes uh, i i don't know it could have been could not have been but point being that leon in engaging with this erp and allowing himself to become corrupted and not standing by his significant other the dungeon master in her decisions and enforcing it at the table sort of as a co-dm he really did lead to the fall of this campaign and he's not a victim. He is absolutely one of the bad people here. This entire story is a shit show. And I'm very glad that the DM did not decide to entertain the ERP that they were not actually interested in at all. They stood up for themselves. They canned the entire campaign, yelled at the three problem players, and fucking left. I wouldn't be surprised if those three problem players never fucking played with them again, and I wouldn't be surprised if the DM actually broke up with Leon shortly after this campaign. That said, much love, stay sexy, and I hope to see you guys later, where I will be... Well, uh, later being at like 11, 12 o'clock at night, maybe like 2 in the morning. <laughs> uh, I'm recording this at like midnight, uh, so I, I, I think I've posted it at like 7 a.m., so... Uh, yeah, I, I, I tend to go live after I've rendered these things, so at like 2 a.m. I'll be playing uh, Path of Exile. Much love and stay sexy. Bye-bye!